Hello and welcome to the Counterpoint Podcast. And now we will see with eyes unclouded by hate. Except not really, because I fucking hate both of you. Um, I'm Brendan, here with Luke. It is I, Jonathan. That's me. Uh, and today we're talking about... Oh, no, no. That is true. Um, as a fact. Yeah, we're going to go around as usual, Luke. What did you think? I felt like the art style was quite vivacious. I enjoyed it. Um, as far as the story itself, it was fine. I was not particularly uh, blown away. Hey, okay, Jonathan, um, how did you... I really, really liked it. I, I liked the... Uh, I mean, you gotta love the art style. Ghibli's just, ooh, you know, hits you in the feels. And then uh, I thought that the story was simple, but in a good way. Is it Ghibli or Ghibli? I believe I it's think, Ghibli. I think it's like either. I think, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's like... Um, I believe it's Ghibli, though. It's like the uh, the gang over there. There's like two different ways that people say it. They say gang and jang, right? No, or do you mean gif? About, what do they call them? Yakuza and Yakuza? I don't know. We could always call up uh, Hayao Miyazaki. Uh, anyway, I also I, I also quite like this movie. Um, it is not my favorite of the games that I've seen. I don't think. Oh, yeah? not, not that I've seen a lot, but uh, it's good. Which one is your favorite? Yeah, I need to know. That. I think Spirited Away. Okay, really? we agree. I like 100%. I like the spectacle of Spirited Away. Interesting. I actually Spirited Away so far is my least favorite. That's crazy to me. You know, I, I hear that a lot. Like a lot of people are like, "Oh, it's overrated." I, I think it's underrated. But I don't anyway. think I don't think it's like I don't think it's overrated or anything. Like I can totally see why a lot of people like it. It's just uh, not my thing. But we're not here to talk about that movie. I, I'm sure we will end up talking about the Ghibli works. <laughs> cinematic universe. Yeah. Yeah, the Ghibli um, cinematic. Because yeah, I've only seen. I want to say this is the third that I've seen. Okay. So I do not have. I do not have a lot of experience. I think I've watched four or five. One sad thing about this movie: there wasn't much food in it. There wasn't. Spirited Away has lots yeah. of food. The Spirited Away had a lot of food, and so did Howl's Moving Castle. Howl's Moving Castle had the best food, but we're not here to talk about those. Movies. <laughs> I haven't seen them. Um, yeah, uh, the art the art super interesting. So obviously, this is uh, this is ninety seven. This is quite. Early on, I guess not. Maybe somewhere in the middle, I guess. Of ninety-seven. Um, but like you know, it it has the old ninety-seven art thing where uh, the static layer is very separate from the layer scenes. Um, but I really liked what they did with the boar, Nago, when when he rampaging he's on almost like three layers like there's the static layer there's like this blurry shadowy layer then there's the animated layer really cool yeah that was nice and later of course that happens again with uh, uh i don't remember that older boar's name uh okoto yeah okoto yeah now here's a question did you guys watch it in uh Sub or dub? Oh yeah, I was gonna ask the same. I watched it in Japanese. I watched it in English dub. Did you? I watched it in English dub. Interesting. Okay. I I actually I want to ask about that because I looked up the cast of this in English. And and I was like, amazing. damn, it's a yeah. really good cast. Yeah, it's it's fucking amazing. So I I had to do it. it Keith David was like, yeah, the, Keith David's Okotomo. I was like, holy shit, Keith. Like, oh man, and he's great. He really plays like the. The strong-willed old boar, very well. Yeah, I didn't really have an interest in rewatching this movie. Not not like I didn't like it. I just, I don't know. I, I was like, cool. I have seen this. But after looking at the English cast, I was like, I kind of want to rewatch this movie just in English yeah. to like yeah. hear the English cast. Because like the the bad guy, Jigo, mm -hmm. Billy Bob Thornton, like <laughs> yeah. Oh, everyone's incredible. Uh, Billy yeah. Crudup is Ashitaka. Lady Eboshi, Mini Driver. Uh, yeah, John DiMaggio. 
yeah. bender. Like, yeah. Uh, it is. It is a crazy cast. So I'm, I may end up rewatching it. Fuck, it's actually really good. Yeah. I don't think it'll make too much of a difference, though. There are slight changes. Uh, because here, here's another fact for you, right? The English version of this was actually written by Neil Gaiman. Yes, or Gaiman, I did know that. Which is like, what, what, what happened here? Oh, so are yeah. there changes between the two versions? Uh, yeah, um, I don't think they're that different from what I like looked up. They're not like majorly different, but uh, it's just, essentially it's a cleaner translation because it is a writer translating and getting the point across. Gotcha. Yeah, and the. Okay. I know one major change is that the the main character, when he cuts his hair, they basically tell him you are never allowed back here. Yes, which I don't believe is in the Japanese translation. Uh, I don't think it was explicitly said, but it was it was made clear he was not supposed to return to his village. Yeah, it wasn't said in the same blunt way. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think that they needed to say that for me to understand, like, especially with uh, his sister, like, saying goodbye and everything. Yeah. yeah. Also, at that, at that scene, the, the thought I have I had was, like, is this going to end up being Shadow of the Colossus? Like, is he just going to keep getting infected as he kills more gods? Or, I guess, I guess uh, Naga wasn't a god, but kills yeah, more of the great well, beast. Well, yeah, Naga was a god. Yeah, Naga was definitely Was god. he a god? Okay. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Did you see what he did at the end? Yeah, I mean, well, because like um, they all seem, even like the the leaders of the various clans revere uh, the dear god as like a further god. So I didn't know if they were just like clan leaders and not necessarily mm. gods. Well, well I the, think that they are they are gods of like uh, the forests, but then the dear god is like the god of life and death. Like a yeah, I mean, in or... in like older Japanese culture, there's a god for like everything, you know. So. Yeah. Also, the forest god is the god of the forest. Like, generous literally. to call that a deer. <laughs> that is the yeah, one thing I don't know that what I the did fuck not that like. It had okay. chicken legs, for starters. <laughs> I think that they were trying to make it like part monkey, part deer, but like then they gave it hands, but then it did not. Then it has <laughs> human face, yeah. for sure, to me. <laughs> that was not a human face, though. It was, it was like, like a baboon hum- slash, slash human face. It was, it was very thing. unsettling. But it was Never interesting because his body and fur looked identical to, like, uh, to Yakul. Um, mm-hmm. And I was like, is Yakul going to be important in some way? Nope, just a nice loyal friend hanging out. Also, maybe it would have been nice if when he was, like, you know, drifting in and out of consciousness, having been shot through the fucking chest, if he, like, remembered his sister, because he's like, I'll never forget you. <laughs> oh, yeah, so that's that's another thing. Um, Not his sister in Japanese. Oh, really? Uh, oh. I believe they are betrothed. Ooh, that's great. That that's changes wild. things a lot, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, I did think it was weird that he gave her his sister's necklace. Hmm. Yeah, it was a little... I guess that makes sense if they're betrothed. Yeah. Yes. She is his bride elect. That makes it... I think that that was a bad change because that makes I agree. That way, way better. Yeah. And, and the fact that he gives it away at the end has more meaning that he's like, I am fully done with all of this in the past and I am choosing you. So do you know what uh, Princess Mononoke means? I do. What it actually translates to. It translates to basically princess vengeance or princess revenge. I mean, that makes sense. Because it, it, it doesn't matter that that name is on the nose because it's not actually her name. It is a name that is given. Yeah. Her name her. is San. Yeah. Is, that was, spoken, that was a little bit from Undertale. I thought, I thought they said son at first. So, like, the, <laughs> the wolf is like my son. And I was like, what? Yeah. And I was also a little confused just because I was like, where's, where's the princess Mononoke? Where's. Where's she? And I was like, ah, I get it. Well, they make it like very clear that these princes. Oh yeah, no, for sure. It was just like a second of like, wait a minute, what is this a guy? No, uh, and, no, I, no. unless the English one was different because uh, Lady uh, Ishiba, what was her name? Bo? Mm-hmm. The Boshi had the, had the right things. They were just in the. Um. She. At least when I watch it, she literally says, 
Princess Mononoke, the girl who, like, the wolf stole the soul of, cuts to her, and then the wolf calls her sand. I'm like, oh, okay. Clearly established that this is who this character is. It just gave me a second of pause when, when it said sand, and I thought that they said sun. And I was like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. Uh, never mind. But yeah, no, one thing I really, really liked that this movie did was, like, it, it just did themes really well without beating it on your head and without explicitly saying it like it had some really good restraint with that and i i just i love that like how um you know main character boyo like both didn't really belong to the forest but he didn't really belong to the human world even though he was yeah. fully a human. he was somewhere in the middle yeah, yeah. and like it was never really expressed but that was clearly just something that was going on and then that got mirrored with princess mononoke which was more clearly expressed. And I think that it made it, I think it made it better for them to never have the moment where he's like, I'm like you. It just made it better that they mm-hmm. just let it be and let it be and, just like an overarching yeah. thing. Yeah. And I mean, they, they kind of did in a way that, you know, he like explicitly was like, but you are human too. Like, mm-hmm. but yeah, I think... but I think that that's like, that's natural. Cause like him in a similar position is like, well, hey, like, that's just that's just his world like his worldview coming through and it's less of like a uh a forced story what's the word i'm looking for it's less of the writer trying yeah. to go look how clever i am yeah exactly i that's i agree fun. for like 90 percent of the movie at the end i felt he was really still like too beholden to the ironworks of people like he was very on their side at the end despite all the shit they had just pulled yeah, and I was like, "All right, like I get the, I get that it's I think mirror." He's just naturally, he wants to help. People yeah, like yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying he should have been fuck these guys. They all need to die, but he was still very like apologetic, despite the fact that they literally just tried to kill the dear god and almost got everyone. I, I don't think they knew though. I didn't think they were like really aware. But you're of what killing it. No, god. no, hold on, like, hold on. They had to have known because they knock off his head, and it gets they trap it. So that he can't have it back. So they know something. No, I'm talking about like the women at, in the village. No, no, no. But I'm talking about like at the lake when all of this is happening. Yeah. He's still very defensive of Lady Iboshi and Shigo. And... Yeah, which doesn't make any sense for sure. Because they they're being tried to make, very shitty. <laughs> they also tried to make Lady Iboshi like a complex character. And like at first they did well. I actually think the ending of this movie is like the weakest part. Like the ending 30 minutes. Yeah. Is, I, I think it stumbles with it because it's trying to have no villains um, and it, it does mostly have no villains. Like, or, or, to be more accurate, it doesn't have no villains because Lady of Oshu would be a villain. But no one is blameless in has. this. No one is blameless. Yeah. In this. Right. Um, but yeah, it definitely stumbles at the end a little bit. I think that uh, why, why you might have gotten tripped up is because like they it, they kind of lost the sight of nobody's blameless and they went into like nobody takes any blame like everybody has blame to take nobody rises up to it like they all just kind of get lucky i guess you know what i mean yeah i would actually argue uh ashitaka is the most blameless and he rises up beyond his blame because he kills his only like crime in the movie really is killing nago but that wasn't uh, even he, a crime. But, but yeah, Nago, for. Nago's already become a demon, which he had no hand in. He's protecting his people, and he gets cursed for it. And at the end, like, uh, at, the, at the side of the lake when the boars show up, he's like, I do, I, I, had, to, I had to kill him. Um, and, like, that's his only moment of doing anything that would really be, like, bad. Like, the village gets very mad at him when he uh, rescued Son and, like, you know they shoot him and like want to kill him and it's like he's literally just trying to stop people from dying he's not like doing anything he doesn't even attack anyone he breaks a sword he's also stopping her like yeah i like uh that was another thing i thought was weird was uh you know they tried to paint her as a sympathetic character right after she was or like right before she just you get to see her totally in the opposite light of like she doesn't care about talking at all 
she's like, oh, yeah, no, they, they won't listen. Where he clearly has her, like, pinned in a way where she can't escape, which they clearly have never had before. Mm -hmm. And then they're just like, no, she has to die. It was just so weird. Yeah, I, I mean, she the, the lady very much represents, uh, the, like, us versus them mentality. She has her people that she has to protect, and she will do it at all costs without really considering if there might be a better way. And I think that's the point of her character. I think they so, just, they go a bit far at the end and she does become a genuine. So a few pop culture-y things. Now, Jonathan, have you watched uh, Star Wars The Clone Wars? I have not. Uh, or Star Wars Rebels or any of those? Yeah. So supposedly... Um, Why was that directed just John? Uh, have you? No. Well, I know you didn't. So there you well, go. What do you mean you know I didn't? I know you didn't. No, you didn't. You didn't know until I told you just now. <laughs> I certainly know now. I didn't say I knew you didn't. What? You're an idiot. <laughs> but anyway, um, Ahsoka Tano, the uh, Twi'lek, is actually based off of uh, San. Like, almost entirely. And they just, like, admitted to it. Like, yeah. It's where we got, like, the inspiration. And then um, Breath of the Wild there's a huge amount of speculation that the world was kind of uh, based off of the world in um, in this movie. Which, thinking about it, kind of makes some sense. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think that would be Breath of the Wild, necessarily. Those elements existed in others. No, no, no. Specifically Breath of the Wild, like a lot of different things, like the art style. I don't think they went with that kind of art style before in the same way. Maybe. I mean, Koroks remind me of the, the tree spirits in this movie. Well, yeah, I mean, those are literally based on Kodamas. But that's yeah. like a thing that's not like... Right, 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 right. Yeah, it's not only this movie, but it is... There's a lot of things in Mononoke that are... Oh, wait, Ghibli does spirits really, really well. Like, they give them so yeah. much character doesn't matter what movie it is like they're always so like i mean the characters are always filled with character but um, like even the little side guys you're just like they're just but, oozing with flavor it's so you know so that that's that's something that miyazaki like his he, I, I don't know what you like his command over like tiny little people creatures ghosts spirits like always top notch but there it's also like a weird thing to be like that's like every single one of his movies basically have some kind of element of like a little creature like not like one but you know like a yeah. whole fuck ton of them like worms and i love it though it's such like an interesting uh yeah. like nobody nobody's filled that niche sense i feel well, um, spirits are very important in japanese mythology they're yeah. ever but present. I mean, it's not it's not in a lot of other movies the like tiny little spirits hmm. i mean kodama yeah. show up yeah i'm just saying that nobody does it like ghibli does it i've got a board yeah, this is the on, about this Kodamas. is the most uh, this is the most common um trivia thing that like everyone knows it's on imdb but uh you know miyazaki basically strong-armed uh, his way to make sure that Princess Mononoke in the U.S. was not cut and like made Americanized. Mm -hmm. When did um, uh, when did the Disney partnership start? Uh, it must have been before this movie. It was after, I think. I think it was after, wasn't it? I, I the the Kaya change feels like a very Disney change. I don't know because. At this point, he was working with Weinstein or Weinstein. Well, I'm going to try to find out. So I think it would be after this. Um, Bearded Away is definitely Disney. I know that much. Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, okay, Disney does have a hand in Princess Mona. Really? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, Princess Mona, okay, might be the first one. Oh, well, here's the thing. Disney becomes sold in 1990s. Yeah, that would be right before. But in case you didn't know this, um, yeah, uh, Miyazaki literally mailed Weinstein. Sword? 
a sword and then it said no cuts on it. Yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, it's, like, it's mm-hmm. important that, like, if the movie has been decided it is whole where it is, you don't then you know, make it less whole. Also, yeah, and I think it's 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 pretty fucked up to try and like change the director's vision unless you like get the movie and it's like, oh, this is shit. Like, if you watched it and thought like this is terrible, even then it would be like I'm redoing the movie. <laughs> like, I'm gonna cut it, cut it to make it like decent i don't know maybe i'm just like not willing to have you know art just be shit yeah but i don't i don't know i i, I oh, understand yeah. his concern because this movie i think this movie's a little on the long side for 97 oh. yeah 90 minutes was the standard still in the 90s i think it was getting more to like 120 minutes but this movie is about 105 like it's over two hours yeah. yeah it's it's yeah 135 spot on i think it might be 134 but yeah so yeah i, I understand feel, his worry it didn't feel it didn't long feel too long though no. like it was like the plot no. was moving by by today's standards this is a pretty it's average a brisk, like a brisk movie <laughs> yeah it was it's a pretty average movie I, I wouldn't look at this and be like oh fuck it's not like justice league uh snyder cut <laughs> like yeah. i'm not god. oh god yep yeah, so the, I, that's why i imagine that's why I, I would think he would be worried about that and send him specifically like no cuts because this is probably a little on the long side for them. But at the same time, um, 90 minutes was the standard simply because it meant that it could fit on a VHS tape with like no quality degradation. Yeah. It's also, um, I guess it, it also depends on if you view this as like a family movie or not, which I don't really think that it would be. I mean, maybe judged against other Ghibli's, you would say, like, Ghibli makes family. But this one is not really kid mm, I think it's... I think it is. It's I, don't, not, like, I think it's a little I, less than other Ghibli. I agree with that. This I one's kind of like violent. Super, it's not, like, young kid, but it is kid. Yeah. Like, but that, that's another thing. Is like, 90 was very standard for kid. Mm. Like, yeah, I mean, and... just last week, we watched Mouse Hunt. That's a 90-minute movie from the same year. <laughs> If it was any longer, I don't know if I could have made it through. Well, yeah, it was a t- absolutely terrible movie. I agree. Yeah. It wasn't absolutely terrible, but it was terrible. Okay. There, does that sound better? You made it to a five. I did? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. I thought I gave it a four. You gave it a four. Oh, you might yeah. have. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. Which, anything less than a five is like, I did not enjoy my watch. Like, simple as that. Five is like, I didn't enjoy my watch, but I didn't dislike my watch. I don't know. But yeah, I was, uh, I enjoyed my watch here. It was a little stressful because I had so much going on, uh, with life just in general this week that I kind of had to split it. But, uh, my watch, like, down the middle. But yeah, I, I still had fun. It was a good journey. Uh, I thought uh, the boars are literally stupid, but at the yeah, same time, you're that. told like they're 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 fucking stupid. Like you also just... like they they were getting dumber because uh, Naga died, so they were turning into like regular beasts as well. Mm-hmm. Really, I don't think it was yeah. supposed to happen that fast. It sounded to me, it sounded like Okoto was making it sound like over time they will, and he just wanted to go out on. Uh... Oh, Last I don't know. I was, under the, I was under the impression that, like, it, yeah, it wasn't going to be immediate, but, like... I think they're just uh, dumb. It was happening. Yeah, like, I definitely think that they were not as smart to begin with. Yeah, they weren't a smart race or whatever they called them. Yeah. Plan. At least in Japanese. Speaking of, speaking of not smart races, the monkeys, they were just, like, I love them. because they, <laughs> they were, were the so best. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, but they were also true. They were correct in everything they said. Were, were you guys bummed when they actually showed the apes? Like later, yeah. yeah. When they were in shadow and like, even their mouths aren't always showing as they talk. Like I was as like, a oh, kid, these I'd look, be like, oh, oh, I was like, these look so fucking cool. And then yeah. later in the forest, they they're just apes and like, oh, oh, that's less cool. Yeah. I was also confused because <laughs> they were like out planting, right? So I thought that they were just like the little shadow creatures, and then they were just regular monkeys. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Yeah, they're like, we plant trees to step. 
and from destroying forests. They, were they destroy fun. our trees. Like, because the okay. Mini park was great in the yeah. Movie. I don't know how they were in the Japanese one, but it was so funny. Yeah, it was great. They were pretty let similar. Us eat. Let us eat, so we can be yeah. strong. Yeah. I want to absorb his power. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. And they just like lazily toss some sticks. <laughs> Yeah, like that shit was funny. Also, like, throw. Is this a, seed? Is this a common ideology that, like, if an ape, like, an ape can become a man by simply like being like a man or eating a man, like, because uh, well, that's actually how. It works. Well, no, I know, I but know like, but it, it wouldn't happen. He said, "I know." It wouldn't happen quickly, though. Like, this isn't the only media where an ape is like. I'm going to just become a man. Like, this, that's a generational evolution thing. But, like, if you look at fucking King Louie in Jungle Book, he's like, I'm going to become a man by learning from this man. And these apes are like, I'm going to eat this man and become strong like man. Well, I mean... Well, I think he was one, trying to take I the think, curse on. Yeah, I thought that possi- I thought that, that was a possibility, too. But she, she, the Princess Mononoke made me think that that wasn't the case. Yeah, I think she like, dispels that. No, you fucking idiot. Like, you won't become a man if you eat a man. I yeah. think that they're just supposed to be, like... Like, I think they're supposed to be smart enough to, like, make up a, uh, you know, like, a mythology about it. But they're, like, not smart enough to think it through. Yeah, I don't think um, it was about the curse. I, I, I hoped it was for a second until she said that. And then I was yeah. like, ah, because that would have been cool. If the monkeys were like, I want to be. But also, that doesn't make like. Why would you want the curse? It kills you. Uh, because to, it could protect. destroy the human. You'd be strong yeah. for like two weeks and then die. Okay. He protect. He attack. Would, most would of you all. not become strong for two weeks to protect anything? There's nothing in this world that you would become strong for. Also, the humans were destroying the forest and were going to end the forest within two weeks. So yeah. Yeah, but like the apes if my just... life, if my life was going to be over and everybody who I loved was going to be killed unless I took on a curse to die in two weeks, yeah, I would do that. Also, for a character that's not on screen, um, the emperor is a huge piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, like a massive piece of shit. Historically, that's usually how they are. <laughs> yeah, not great people, emperor. There's a reason a lot of them got overthrown. Bring me the god. Bring, bring me the head of the god of the forest. Yeah, That's what I, also, I need. I also think uh, while every like there was no character in this movie that I would say like was stupid or acted irrationally, I will say um, main character Boyo was not great at just explaining things. Like he never was like until very later in the movie he was never like oh, so why can't you guys live in peace? Like, he never even tried it until they were at war. Like, when he was talking with uh, the lady, he he never brought it up with her, mm -hmm. which I just thought was kind of goofy. And he never brought it up with um, uh, Sun until, uh, I think, until the same thing, like, until they were at war. Like, I think... I don't know if you know this, but peace is a revolutionary war. idea. Like, it's... You can't bring it up in like large soul or large circles. I mean, what's larger than two people in the middle of a battle, like two armies? I think that that's the largest circle. The smaller circle would be like when he was with the lepers and her. He could just be like, "So, he, do you think that maybe we could talk it out?" Like he never even tried. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there was a moment during this uh, movie where I was. Like, I, I felt like a spookiness. It wasn't like I was scared, but I was like, oh, that's fucked up. And that was when uh, when Keith David was under the impression that his uh, friends had returned. Alas, his friends had not returned. When? When uh, Okoto mm -hmm. is going to see the forest god. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, and like the the humans and the way they're like moving, they're not moving like a human would move. It, it was like spooky. It was like what the fuck? The eyes were blotted out on the boars that they were hiding. Yeah, yeah, and they were like slug moving. Yeah, it was. And then you know that that shit was like oof. He's gonna get got. Like you could already tell. It was already it's foretold. <laughs>
Yeah, he was like, they have returned from the land. Also, why did he have eye boogers? He had so many eye boogies. He was blind. Because he's blind. Do blind people have more eye No, I, I don't. I well, it's just he didn't care to ever clean his eyes because he wasn't using them. I just thought they were funny. Every time it went in on his eyes, I was like, oh, he's crusty. <laughs> he, he ain't got no fingies to, like, rub his eyes. Well, then all the boys should have some boogies, but they didn't. They help each other out because they're not blind. They... Oh, okay. But they don't help him out. They don't want no, to. Because he's blind. He doesn't need his death. <laughs> yeah. Zika, he never asks for help. He doesn't know they're there. He's blind. Yeah, and it's it's a bummer that San can't convince him otherwise. Can't convince yeah. him that he's blind? He was, he, he was he blind becomes, in multiple ways. Yeah, he becomes blind in vision and then blind. in. In rage. Yeah, and mental. Yeah. Capacity. You say no characters are dumb. Okoto is kind of dumb. Yeah. Yeah. But at the but same he was, time. He was also like, he had different sort of like, um, what's the word? Like, it was his character to not be, like, because he wasn't, he didn't act stupidly. Like, every decision he made, you could understand. No, I, I disagree though, because the scene you're talking about where San is trying to talk him down, literally, like, just before, I mean, not just before, a little bit before. When he's, told when, he's what, when he's told what happens to Nago, yeah, he's like, oh, we're so ashamed that I'm from our clan. Yeah. And then when he's told that he's turning into a demon, he's like, fuck, I'll become a demon. Let's go. <laughs> well, I mean... Well, I... here's what I think, right? I think I watched it in the English dub, and Keith David is an amazing actor. Yeah. And I think Captain Anderson deserves more respect. I think yeah. that uh, it doesn't. I think that he's thinking of it in the same way that I was thinking about it with the monkeys, where he's like, he wants to use the power of being a demon to like inflict the most pain, which is again like a theme of the movie. Like that's why he passed the curse on, because he thought that he could get the boy to do the same thing, but he didn't, which is like breaking the cycle, um, and uh, he just wasn't strong enough to do it, and like. I just think that plays more into uh, he's just like not blameless. I think these clans just trust in the deer god more. Well, deer god pretty mysterious though. He's he's a little bit aloof. Yeah, but yeah, he gets true. shit done. He prove it. Does he? Though? He kind I mean, of fucked up. I think he died. Once. But I'll then he honest. but then he comes back and he ends the threat. But he. He comes back, but it's like, you know, more or less, he, like, doesn't. Listen, he resolves the whole situation. Though. He basically, they, they play it off like, well, he's not really here, but he, he's here. But he'll never be here again physically. We lost a good deer boy. We lost yeah. a deer monkey chicken man. And that's a fact. But that's the whole point, too, is that the god is a bunch of different species you know, combined. And maybe those clans need to stop being little bitches. Maybe they need to get some boring Yeah, also, chicken. if the clans were that worried about the forest, why not uh, work together at any point? The boar, oh, again, this is another thing Okotobi does. He actively refuses help from the wolves. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing, too, is like, I don't get why the humans are like, ah, oh, you can't plant the forest back. It's like, yeah, we want to fuck up this entire forest. It's like what? Just let them plant. Like it's gonna take a hundred. Uh, they years. don't. They, like, they don't. Stupid fucking apes. Apes. They they don't replant because they're trying to get to the sand under the trees. So oh. They're excavating the land. I and thought also, that they were mining the mountain out after the sand became depleted. Same thing. Oh, they were they were getting like sand from a mining. different area, oh, and then okay. they depleted that, so they went to the forest and they were cutting down trees, dig in the forest and. Okay, and then, I thought that they were like actually like digging Nago, in the mountain. Nago did not like that. Nago did not like. That. All right, it was making more sense now. And that's what started the whole conflict to begin with. Okay. Now my question is, uh, why did Nago not like that? If you could just replant the trees after you're done with a certain area. Yeah, they also um, they could have just they could have just talked to one another. Yeah, yeah, especially like, since hey, they can. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, this this area over here, we kind of already uh, got all the iron out. Can we come over here? You can plant up that area. We'll take down this area. We'll do a little swap a route. Then it all would have worked out. 
That's all they had to do was swap a root. I mean, I guess trees take a while. It wouldn't be yeah. quite a simple swap oh, yeah. route. Yeah. Plant more I trees. Mean, Humans agree, yeah. they can agree to help plant trees. And some workers plant some trees. Yeah, but I actually think that this conflict was more, uh, not like necessary, inevitable, I guess is what I would say, after hearing that, because, I mean, people I mean, would just... Yes, yeah, so this is very much about uh, a lack of environmentalism as humanity has progressed as this. I think it's, I think it's yeah. also, you know, racism in a certain light, but yeah. Yeah, good film. Good themes. We haven't said it yet. The soundtrack themes. is also great. I mean... Yeah, really good. So, Hitachi, always great. Does all of it. He knows the assignment and he delivers. It's yeah, I good. don't think there's ever been one that I've been like, well, this is very good. Although I haven't seen a... What is it? The, the latest Ghibli that people seem to really not like? The 3G one? Yeah, the 3D one. Or 3G. <laughs> 3D. I mean, if you watch it over 3G, it will just take a very long time to download. Uh, what is it? Ear, Earwig the, and the Witch. Yeah, Earwig and the Witch. It has bad reviews across when the board. When I was there, or when Mar Marine was there, that's another one that doesn't have uh, great reviews. Looks well, like you notice something good. that they're not from... Uh, from... Uh, Hayao Miyazaki. Uh, he's still the writer for you. Mm, I think the problems aren't necessarily the writing, though. And I'm looking at writers, and there were multiple other writers. He does not direct. He's, he did not. So he did not actually write the screenplay. He just developed the overarching story. That's the only thing he did. And yeah, most of the movies that Goro uh, Miyazaki has done have been kind of mediocre. It seems like his movies are like have no, I don't know. It seems mean to be like they have no artistic in like integrity, but like they don't. Anyway, um, Hayao Miyazaki, I haven't watched a movie from him that I was like I hate. The worst movie that I've seen from him is probably, uh, was it his last one that he directed? Um, it's the one where the it's like Japanese. Jap yes, it's Japan in like 1930s. Uh, yeah. Last directed was The Wind Rises. Yeah, which I was not um, a huge fan of. I think I've seen this a really long time ago. Well, it's from 2013, which would be almost a really long time ago. That's almost as long. No. <laughs> but yeah. Um, is that it? Anything else to add? I think so. Yeah, I don't think I have anything else. All right. We're ready for the scores. Let's do it. Luke, what are you giving it? I think I'm going to give it an 8. Give it. Uh, I want to give it a 10, but I don't know if it's quite there. I'll give it a 9. Uh, I'm giving it a... Very well. Aggregate score of 8.33. Uh, Great job, everybody. Yeah, good movie. What? Still not the highest rated. Mm -mm. One of these days. John, when I bring... it 10, it would have been. Yeah. It would have been tied. How dare you? Tied? You can't change it now. It's illegal. <laughs> so. That's okay. I won't change it. I um, have integrity with my, my ratings. Jonathan, your pick is next. Oh, I haven't even thought about this. I kind of want to do... Uh, a love story movie about time. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Yes, let's do it. About time is a good movie, but I know that you don't like those movies. Um, yeah, that's okay. I can watch a movie. He I must suffer. We, we, listen, he literally gave us Mouse Hunt. It was great. That <laughs> too. You know what? <laughs> retaliation. <laughs> about time is two hours long. I can suffer about for time. two hours. 
Yeah, we, I mean. We suffered an hour and a half. Yeah, hold it's on. I'm just movie. I'm just looking up the director real quick. It's a good movie. I like it. It was fun. The writer. I don't think I'm gonna. But it's fine. I don't think he will. I actually don't <laughs> think Luke will love it. I don't think Luke will hate it. But I don't really think he'll. We shall see. Yeah, we'll see. It definitely looks like he writes some bad movies. But that doesn't matter. Who's okay. uh who's the director or who's the writer? The this? director like, yeah. and the writer is the same. It's Richard Curtis. Okay. 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 Richard Curtis. He also He's did old. he also did Love Action. And Mama and Mia four, Here we go again. four Weddings and a Funeral. Mama but not Mia, the American the superior American version. <laughs> um yeah, so that's that's next week. About time. I also I have a book report. Um oh. Hit us with it. I read the first. Well, I guess I should book a report for for people listening. Um, we've we've talked about many movies, and I'm going through and reading some of the things they were adapted from. Uh, so I read the first volume of the graphic novel for Snowpiercer. Um, really different. Um, for starters, no one was Wilford. I don't they. Both the movie and the TV series have the guy as Wilford. I don't know if a Wilford character is introduced later, but the man running the train is not called Wilford. What's his What's name? Called? I forget. They, Maybe you they find have, out. They have very Eastern yeah. European name. Maybe um, they just made it Wilford. I guess European. Easier than like, uh, Kurats. I don't think. I don't think his name was like hard. To say, yeah. Uh, but anyway, it, it's pretty good. I'll I'll continue to, to read more of it. Um, the it's just very different. Like the characters aren't the same at all. Uh, the story doesn't really follow the same beats at all. Uh, In what ways you got a, a whole new beast? What's different about it? Oh, the, 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 the guy, okay, the guy's name is Alec Forrester, who runs the train. Not a hard name. Um, okay, so we follow uh, Proloff. Name. Uh, the train is 1,001 cars long. That's the same thing as the uh, series. I don't think it's stated in the movie how long it is, but I, I believe it's supposed to be the same. Um, he is taken. He, he tries to escape from the tail. And he gets uh, quarantined because they're worried about a virus. People are dying that, that he's come into contact with. Um, so he gets quarantined with a lady who they very quickly fall in love. Uh, and they, uh, they escape from quarantine. More people are dying. And he eventually gets to the front of the train where he... Uh, He's stopped by like the guards, and they're like, "Fuck you! Everyone's dying." I mean, not everyone. A, a few people are dying, killing you. Um, even though they they don't know for sure that he's doing it, I think it makes it kind of clear that he's probably doing. It. Uh, but he busts the window in in the car they're in, killing the guard and the woman he is uh, in a pseudo relationship with. And Forrester comes back to that car and drags him. Like, oh, where's Where's, uh, I forget her name, Adeline. He's like, oh, I could only save one of you. And now you will become the train man. That guy dies. Well, I wanted to be the train man, so. Wait, he dies? Yeah, that guy dies. Uh, the guy who was running the train. He needed a successor. Alec? Yes. And then okay. uh, everyone else on the train dies of the virus the end in the Beautiful. first book yeah and there's other books yes um hmm. there are there are many there are there are multiple trains i believe graphic novel hmm. oh well it's on maybe the you just track. read the wrong one you're gonna yeah, get maybe, the wilford one no, no, no i mean maybe the, yeah, wilford but, was on the first train but the Forrester says train. he's the one who so it, makes the engine. A problem if the train stops running and it's still on the tracks. 
if what if the tracks are all different uh so again this, so this is based on the tv series there are the track is a circuit but there are go arounds various places yeah. so there are little loops that you can go around a set of track I assume. But then, like, it defeats the purpose because the whole thing it was it was supposed to take a year to go Happy around. New Year, yeah, like, yeah, go around's not going to adhere to that. Um, again, in the TV series, they adjust speed to hit points at specific times. They compensate. They have an engineering team that's constantly doing math and making sure they're hitting things at the right checkpoints and adjusting speed. All right. The TV series is good. You guys should watch it. That's kind of weird because then it's like. It's not that it takes a year to go around. It's that you make it take. Well, it would around. take a year in perfect condition, and then you compensate to hit like okay, anniversary. Here's marks. a question. Okay, have any of you seen Invincible yet? Oh, I have. It's so good. Why are we talking about this now? This has nothing to do with anything. Why didn't you wait until we ended? <laughs> You're Listen, a blight on this. Invincible is earth. important. We might have to do. We might have to do eventually because uh, it's so good. This is actually, so this is something I wanted to bring up. Um, well, this is hard to manage with our time, though. Because there are times when, like, so say we wanted to talk about... Uh, yeah, a TV show would have to give us, like, a month. Like, if we did... Yeah, we'd have to, like, month. pick it way ahead of time. But I was also just thinking, like, movies that are connected, like... Yeah. You know, talking but about, to like, be, Incredibles to be, to be 1 honest, and 2 though, at the same time. Invincible so. in this scenario... We're not talking about Invincible right now. It has nothing to do with anything. I would do. You could have waited 30 seconds. But if you talk about it, then you're not going to want to talk about it on the podcast because you guys have something against talking about stuff that we've talked about. Yeah, I, we, I we have true. to talk about it on the podcast, and I think it's a good good thing to talk about at some point. Okay, well, your pick isn't for like, in three weeks now. Well, I, again, I don't know how we do a TV show. I think total runtime would be like four hours. I guess it's no better than Justice League. Yeah. <laughs> um, Eight episodes that are like. I'm I'm not opposed to doing stuff like that. It's just hard when you consider how much of something there is. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we wouldn't be able to be like, "Hey, let's do Game of Thrones." Jonathan, get eight seasons done. Hurry yeah. up. Like, because like I I think it'd be really interesting to talk about like the Alien series as a whole, and like obviously we could pick one of the Alien movies and like bring things up, but like. It would be better if all of us had freshly watched them. Yeah, specifically, I think um, we could do like season ones of shows or seasons of shows that we had previously watched and go from there. Like, I think we could have an episode just talking about Westworld. We haven't really gone into insane all detail. Of Westworld, Westworld or just like season like season one. one? Okay, I think that you'd have to split it up into seasons. I know yeah, you're not allowed to talk about it. Yeah. Also, I like that, Jonathan, you're like, oh, at some point we're going to have to go to TV series. It has been nine weeks. We have covered nine movies. We have not oh, <laughs> dug no, to the I bottom of that I well. Could, I mean, what I if we do? There are only 120,000 movies. When we run out... That's like, not what I meant. I meant, like, I w there are some TV shows that I would rather talk about than some movies. Like, I would, I would, I would uh, pose that we do a TV show before some movies. Do we have a veto rule? I forget if we talked about that. Is, yeah, it, if, no. is it if the other no, two people... No rule. But you have to have a... Uh, oh, right. It was You have to have a compelling, compelling reason. reason. And then it's got to be... Do, don't you, doesn't the other person have to, like, agree? Both people, like, both people that aren't the one picking it have to agree and have a compelling reason. Yeah. yeah. Which is, I think, is going to be a rare thing. I don't think there's a lot of need to, like, veto something. Like, if, if Jonathan's like, let's watch Glee season one. Why Actually, season one's probably fine. Why would I even That's what that? I heard, is that the season, like, the first season, or it's first Because it, it starts season. as, like, a parody show, as far as I understand. And it becomes a parody of it. Yeah. Oof. Um... Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Nor there. Vetoes will probably never happen on Mike. It might. It'll be a good. It'll be entertaining. Yeah. I just we tend to pick things in text, discuss them, discuss the picks in the chat, not so much. On I don't recording. think a veto will ever happen unless it's like 
I'm trying to think of something like let's review. Let's re-review uh, Tenet. Zack Zach's <laughs> Justice League. I mean, the reason would be compelling enough of like it's a lot of fucking time. But also, if you picked like season three of a show I hadn't seen it, it would be like I'm not gonna just like mainline yeah. the show. Yeah, it might be interesting for some shows though. <laughs> I disagree. Go out of order. <laughs> season three of uh, um, American Horror Story. Well, that's an anthology. Yeah, I mean, it anthology. is still in. It's still interconnected though. In a way, yeah. No, I mean, la later seasons are literally directly connected hmm. to other seasons. Interesting. I think I only ever did like the first four, and then I was like, okay. Yeah, I watched like the four, but uh, apparently there's like a, there's one. It's called Apocalypse or something, and it's like a direct continuation of the first. Wild. I guess that makes sense because he's like the devil or whatever. Yeah, the kid. Um, anyway, neither here nor there. Um, we've been done for a while. We are now just talking about bullshit. Um, so thanks for listening. Next week will be about time. I would say it's about time, but I won't because I don't want to watch. But we'll have to say that <laughs> next episode when we see it's about time for about. Time. It kind of ha it kind of is about time though because you have brought it up over the course of multiple picks of the as something you want to do. Yeah, but what time? I brought up a lot of picks. It's true. Uh, it's yeah, also it's a, also I from a big list. 2013, so you're kind of chomping my bit here. Oh, it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, and it's not an Oscar movie. <laughs> is it not? Are you sure about that? You've been wrong before. Yeah, I'm not is sure. It, is it Oscar <laughs> nominated? I'd be, I'd be doubted. I'd really doubt that. No, it doesn't look like it's out in the Academy Award. Let's go. It is. I took I took your uh, your Oscar for the everybody's for chomping everybody's pick. bits. That means I need to pick an Oscar. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. Thanks the, for listening. The fact. Now we're cycling through. <laughs>